out and we start listening to Andy. And then you walked up from behind me. And I don't even know why you're just like the random hype man of the concert. Like you walked up and you're like, hey, you guys ready to get hype? Like, and I was like, does he work here? Like, what's going on? But yeah. Why were you doing that? I never um, got to ask you. Two reasons. That's always been me at concerts. I'm like just <laughs> wild. And two, the homies were playing. Oh, that's D- right, huh? DJ Justified, Justin, um, was oh. was spinning. He opened up, and then it went to uh, Brandon DJ P. Justified is the Miles Minnick of DJs right now in Sacramento. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Right. All righty, episode one of Soul Purpose Podcast. I'm AJ Morales. You can find me at AJ Solified. I'm an entrepreneur, audio engineer. Uh, I got Emilio here. What's up, y'all? I've always wanted a podcast. Um, my name's Emilio Sarabia. I am a Christian rapper, entrepreneur, and I'm looking to just have some fun today, man. So let's dive right into it. <laughs> don't don't let him fool you. He's a uh, he's a uh, audio engineer too. <laughs> I am an audio engineer. Yes, that goes into um, Christian rapper. I wasn't even thinking. Yeah. So what's up, man? What all you right, up to? bro. Um, yo, I've been chilling, man. I was sick. All day. had a migraine. Great way to the first podcast. Yeah. But, yeah. Sorry, I didn't get to contribute to our notes, and I was really no. It's all good, it today. man. But other than that, I've, other than that, I've been good, bro. Yeah, the, I'm not going to lie to you. The connection's kind of screwing up a little bit, but I think we'll be all right. We'll just roll with it. Um, we have a lot yeah, of... Yeah, you're sounding robotic. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of fixes we got to eventually work out of this podcast. <laughs> have you read through any of my yeah. notes that I sent you? Um, I read through the first half. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you added a lot more. I added a lot more. <laughs> yeah, you. I'm sorry. My dad came over, man. I was like, ah worst time he, i mean i like him coming through and stuff he just shows up at the worst times like when i'm trying to get stuff done yeah he's been he's been popping around a lot so i mean yeah I emphasize mean, on the pops <laughs> <laughs> emphasize on the pops yeah um well i i mean we already kind of introduced ourselves uh well i mean what are your top three goals of 2021 man just getting better man like 2020 was like a real standstill year like it was for everybody for me i mean we made a lot of music this year we were just getting that first project villain out and now you know i i'm not wanting to like compare my music to anybody i kind of just want to be real focused on what i'm doing and just you know trying to get better at rapping sounding better um trying to get my charisma in my music and yeah that's it just that hopefully saving a lot of money too I'm gonna lay low this year and just save up as much as I can. What about you, bro? Yeah, no, uh, I would say one of the biggest goals of, of this year is just to, uh, build, build up this label. Uh, I feel like me and you have always been interconnected in some way. Um, <laughs> from, the, <laughs> All right, go ahead. from the day we met, like, uh, it seems like we've always had a connection. Uh, we've always vibed off each other very well and we've always been able to, uh, meet on the same understanding of, of some level, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, man, I, I, it's weird. Cause I brought soul purpose to you. It randomly came to me. I, I don't even know how it came to me, but I was just like, Hey, this is an idea that God has given me. And I brought it to you and I was like, what do you think about it? And you had totally had some weird connection with your lyrics. Yeah, bro. What's, what's funny about like the soul. I mean, we've always known that we kind of wanted to make a, like, um, a record label or something together you know we've always felt that but like when you came with this idea i was like dude that's perfect but me being me and doubting everything always at first i was like yo let's try to come up with some new names and so we remember we were in the group chat trying to just put down all these weird names i'm like anything goes man just to see what we come up i gotta be honest every name that i came up with was totally fire (laughs) oh okay yeah i mean you had a lot of good ones i definitely wasn't contributing um (laughs) the best of names i'll I'll say that but my creative process is like like I get white writer's block a lot. So my trick is to just try and, you know, I'll tell myself you're allowed to write trash as long as you're getting to the next bar and you can come back and fix it. So when I'm right. doing so, when I'm thinking of so purpose, I was just trying all these names that sound weird to see if something nice will pop off. So that was my concept, but you sat with everything that you were thinking of and just like gave actual, actual good names. Didn't you give us one that was like already something? 
Yeah, it, there was Fire. so many times that I was just like, I can't even do this. Like, this is so hard. But on the contrary, that also gave me the best vision of like, oh man, this is really something that God gave me. Like, this is this is really, yeah. this is really. Fact, purpose was not even like nowhere. Yeah, no, it's like that was so separate from everything else. It made sense. Um, but yeah, well, and while we're here, why don't you just um explain exactly what um soul purpose means? Yeah, so soul purpose is you know like in a sense of what soul is. Uh, well soul like being your soul that you're you, you know you, you're living being but uh the way we spelt it was sol like the sun and soul purpose being like the sun has a double entendre meaning it's kind of or a double meaning it's like the sun that is in the sky and then it's also like the sun the, ho the holy father and son and spirit you know and so uh that that was the initial meaning behind it and didn't you say that um you got it from Solified? Yes. So I started going by AJ Solified on all my uh, social media platforms. And the way that came about is because, I, I, I mean, I had just looked up what the word meant because it was interesting to me. I'm like, man, yeah. uh, I'm wondering what Solified means. And it just means faith alone, living on faith alone. So Solified and Soul being soul purpose just like made so much sense when it came into a faith-based company or a faith-based uh, belief system. And it, it was just huge to have that. 100%, dude. That's so dope. And while we're here, I think might as well, first podcast, you know, first time we're talking together, let's go ahead and dive into how we met. Because this this story is hilarious. You said we were, hold on, I got I got to add this in here. You said you, we were. You, you, kind of, you kind of freaked me out when you met me. <laughs> yeah, I kind of freaked me oh. Let me get that reverb off real quick. Got to, a little too connected. But um, yeah, so whenever I met a Anthony, I was like, I think it was 2016, right? Or 14? 16. It, and, um, it was definitely 2016. Yeah. 2016, um, I was I was like real. I mean, I had been safe for a cool minute, like six years, but I was real bold that year. Yes. Let's say that. And so I was. he tried to do the reverb. <laughs> yes. But yeah. Oh my gosh. That thing makes everything better. <laughs> like say, they, say, they say that moist is a gross word, right? Watch this. Moist. That's amazing. That's, that's amazing, dude. If I could have that word. in real life, if you could have that in real life, what would you do? Before I continue with that story, if I want to pivot I, if here. If I could just quick. pop on reverb in real life anytime I yeah. want. If you could hop on reverb and just whatever you wanted to say. Can I tell you a little secret? What? I can. <laughs> Mix up. Okay. Say something very mundane and see how dope it sounds. Like, mom, what do you want? Take out the trash. It's fire. Battery's not included. <laughs> it's like it's like that sound <laughs> you hear whenever you found your purpose in it in the movie and it just like pops in your head. Yep. Like you're like you're in the fight, you get punched and you're on the floor and it's like, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that, that Yao Ming said? Wexel. Wexel. Yao uh, Yao Ming? Yeah, I said yeah. I mean, oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> Yagi. Sorry, dude. And I've been watching Cobra Ooh. Kai. I don't know why I said Yao Ming. <laughs> dude, they're and totally Yao opposite. One's Japanese, the other on the one's like. Now. We're on the, we're on episode one, and every on the, everybody on the internet goes cancel. Yeah, <laughs> they just cancel you instantly. <laughs> my my bad, guys. We made it through one podcast. We're one on is like podcast. a third of the size of the other too. Yeah, but I think Miyagi could beat up Yao Ming. Oh, heck yeah. I feel like, I'm sorry, but I feel like any tall person instantly gets beat up by their height. Their height is a yeah. disadvantage. The Big time. After, the joints stop working after like six, six, eight. Yeah. Oh, no, I guess there's some good basketball player. I'll say like seven foot's the limit for. Yeah, for but get this. Right. Not every tall person conditions like a basketball player. Oh, that's true. That's true. Think but even like that. Yao Ming, I They're feel like Yao Ming's the best of their ability. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I'll go back to the story now. Oh, I didn't mean to pivot off like the <laughs> point one second into the podcast. But me, between me and you, how much me and you will be in a conversation, and then we just start doing other things. I guarantee you that that's going to happen a lot on this podcast. Yes. So we're going back to 2016. Um, I was real bold in my faith around that time. I still am, you know, just I was real uh, naively bold in my faith, I'd say. 
And um, I just got back from ministering to my longtime friend, Chase. Uh, me and my little brother, Cooper, we ministered to him and he gave his life to Christ. So it was like a big moment. We're all happy and stuff. Um, and then we're chilling one day and it's, we found out it's like eight o'clock. Andy Manil's is having like a concert. Uh, what time was the concert starting? It wasn't that late. It was like six o'clock. It six wasn't o'clock. late okay. at all. It that was, was daylight it, it was in downtown Sacramento at, uh, oh my God, why can't I think of the name of the place? I never can remember it. Harlow's nightclub. Harlow's nightclub. So Andy Manil was performing there. I think it was like four in, um, where I, at my city, I live an hour away from Sacramento. And so I was like, man. I really want to go. He's like my favorite artist. So me and Chase finally decided to go. We wanted to bring Chase because Chase had just gave his life to Christ. And we wanted to show him like, yo, look, there's some dope Christian uh, hip hop that you would really like. Yada, yada, yada. So we get there. Um, we get into the crowd and we start listening to Andy. And then you walked up from behind me. And I don't even know why you're just like the random hype man of the concert. Like you walked up and you're like, hey, you guys ready to get hype? Like, and I was like, does he work here? Like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, why were you doing that? I never um, got asked. Two reasons. That's always been me at concerts. I'm like just <laughs> wild. And two, the homies were playing. Oh, that's D- right, huh? DJ Justified Justin um, was oh. was spinning. He opened up, and then it went to uh, Brandon DJ P. Justified is the Miles Minnick of DJs right now in Sacramento. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. At the same then- time, he's. He's been doing it since he was 12 years old. I remember him spinning. That's yeah, crazy. I can remember him spinning a long time ago. And and there were a lot of opportunities where I had to DJ and I didn't want to do certain events. And I was just like, bro, take this. Like, like I don't have time to do this right now. I was getting so busy with other stuff. Um, and I shot him. Yeah, that's dope. I shot him a few, a few shows that I used to work with House of Slap a lot. Uh, which was a lot of DJs. DJ Anointed uh, owned House of Slap. And there was a maybe a collective of like eight or nine different DJs that were in House of Slap. I wasn't officially in it, but DJ Anointed would hit me up and be like, hey, I can't do this concert. So-and-so is coming into town. It's my daughter's birthday, blah, 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 blah. By the way, randomly, I went to school with this daughter, uh, Jay Raya. <laughs> um, anyway, but... Um, and then I ended up being like... I can't do this either. So here you go. And I shot him a few concerts, but he was already doing his own thing at like his high school. Um, he was doing big things at Bradshaw Christian. Like he was doing some cool things back then. Shout out DJ Justified. Yeah, he's a, a beast. he's a beast. And then, okay, so you said you also knew Brandon P. Anybody else? Um, honestly, that yeah, just those two. The homies were playing and. You know, I I saw that they were going to be performing, and I wanted to be there to show out. Yeah, definitely, I would have too. I know, I know them now. Well, I know, I know Brandon through you, but I know I met Justin like not too long ago in 2019. Right. But um, yeah, so you were there, and you're like, you guys ready to get hype? And I was like, yeah. And so then we're in the we're in the concert, and that concert was honestly fire. Like, do you remember it? Like, um, I remember Andy jumping off stage in the crowd, grabbing yeah, me by dude. my neck and jumping with me, and I was like. All right, yeah, it was me and Andy Video, and I, we had like our arms around each other. I was like, okay. He's like, we're friends. Yeah. And you know what's funny? A fun fact about this story, uh, my friend Zach, he goes by, what's his rap name? Z- ZDRX? So my friend Zach, he goes by ZDRX, was actually in the crowd that night. He was literally like two people in front of me, and like years later now, we're both rappers, we're both friends. He was there? He was there, dude. I'll show you the video because we were talking about the same concert. I was telling him that literally what I want to talk about now, the testimony of how I met you. And he was like, dude, was it at um whatever you said the club's name was? And I was like, yeah, yeah I was at the club. like, oh, dude, I was there. And I'm like, bet. And so we, I, we both pulled out our Snapchats and started looking at like our positioning in the area. And I literally have him on my phone. Like he's right in front of me when I'm filming Andy. And I was like, that's crazy, dude. Like you never know who you, who's in the crowd or who you're going to meet. His name, yeah. Zach, his real name, Zach, right? Real name, Zach. Yeah. I'm just gonna, think, I'm gonna call him Zach because I could never say that name. I know it's Zach Claiborne. I was so happy when I finally got his name when he sent me his phone number, and I was like, great. I would I totally go by Zach Claiborne. That's such a dope That's name. Fire. Eventually, I bet you he will. You know how? Or it just happens. Clay. I, I, I would go by Clay or something. You know? Yeah, Clay. That's sick. But but yeah. Long story short, at the end of the concert. I felt God, I never told you this next part of the story that I'm about to tell Mm -hmm. you, but I felt God telling me like, um, 
that person over there is somebody that is super important to you know the mission the to go and glorify god and you know everything that i want to do glorify the kingdom through my music he's like that person is like like in a special way directly linked to the things you're going to do in the future and uh, this person worked in music you guys have to work together and there, i only have a few of these moments in my life where like i completely know that the holy spirit's talking to me and i'm going in full force and so um probably like another recent version of that would be like when i met natalie the first time i I'm, i seen my girlfriend i knew that that was like somebody i was going to be with but um <laughs> pan it over to uh, my man boyfriend no it's kidding <laughs> <laughs> I hate Sorry. you so much for saying stupid stuff like that on the podcast. Bro. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> what was it I said I'm going to say every time I, um, one of us says something sus? I don't remember. Oh, dude, I forgot. That would have been perfect. But anyways, my you should bad. Just drop a, you should drop uh, a toxic with the... Uh... <laughs> we need to get buttons just to be like, toxic. I'm anyway. down. I'm down. Maybe <laughs> I should have a toxic button. That, that yeah. would be... That would be the one right there. Comment if we should have a toxic button. But um, yeah, so I felt God telling me like this guy over here is is um is he works in music and you need to go talk to him. So I'm like, all right, bet. Now this is the part of the story I've never told you. So I'm walking over and be in mind, I only seen AJ once. I only this guy, I, I, this new guy I met, I only seen him once. So I didn't remember exactly how he looked, just kind of the makeup of what he looked like. So I walk up. And this dude's turned around. He looks like AJ completely. And I grab him and I'm like, hey, dude. Um, and I say exactly what I said to you. But then, like, I kind of looked at him a little weird because I'm like, I don't think you're the guy. <laughs> and he's like, oh, the, the, he's Bro. over here. And he points at you. And then I, you didn't even know. Do you know who so that was, was? Who? That was my cousin. Yeah. Oh, which cousin? Uh, you don't know him, but he's from Compton and he used to live with us. Oh, and- okay. Yeah. Is he uh, a rapper? Nah, he's just, just That's from... heck of funny. He probably was like, what is this weirdo talking about? We kind but of I, resemble each other because I look more like my mom's side of the family, which he's from my mom's side of the family. Oh, So okay. it's kind of funny you did that. <laughs> no, because I, but like, I, you look just like him. I was like, wait a minute. But the minute I was talking to him, I was like, this, uh, this is not the right guy. You know when you notice, but it's too late. You already said the words. I was like, dang. And then he told me, oh, no, he's right here. And then he, like, pointed at you, and that's when I went up to you. And for the people at home, I was like, um, hey, what's up, man? Uh, I feel like God's telling me you make music, and we need to work together. Something along those lines, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, I feel like God's telling me you make music, and we need to work together. So he gave um, me his number, and then, like, from that point forward, we kind of just became friends at first. I remember, like, not too many months later, you invited me to your house. Yeah. To make a, to record a song, right? Blue fish. What was that, that song? Blue fish, I think. The beat was blue fish. And then um didn't you put a hook on it? Yeah. You, you recorded a hook. It was like, uh, what was the lyrics? I just remember I keep on digging holes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we recorded a I song. Know, I was trying I was trying a lot of stuff back then. I was trying to just get experimental. I think the firest hook on a side note, the firest hook that you've ever made was that West Coast song. Yeah, that will never see the light of day. I mean, I might get convinced you to use it one day, so I don't know about that because I want to rap. I want to rap on that voice, one too. But <laughs> it wasn't uh, a but bad yeah. beat. I'll, I'll admit it myself. I when I, when I was producing and stuff, I wasn't. Oh, that you produced bad. that beat? Yeah, you produced that. Oh, that's crazy. That's my fire. brother, I had my brother just create the bass line, the doom, 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 or whatever. However, it went. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's sick. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's super dope. Yeah, but um, yeah. So we, I remember we made a few. We did a few. We just made a, We made that song, but we never really like finished it. I I didn't really have that much lyrics at that at that moment. And then just throughout the time, we'd be like, you know, hold on, hold contact. on, hold on. Let's see. Oh, you got it. Slap it for the podcast, please. Is it this? Um. I remember this song. I think it is. Can we truly grow? Yo, it's good right here. Hey, hey, it's so good right here. I don't remember my lyrics. <laughs> I don't remember my. That's whole. That's the first one we ever recorded on. That's the first one we ever recorded on. Yeah. That's like a funny. Would you just go on your in your search and type bluefish? 
No, I actually just knew where it was. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought that was, I think you were saying that was the West Coast beat at first. I was like, no, it's not that. No, one. no, 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 no. I knew that wasn't the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah, it's... but that, that song, that, that was, I mean, you, you actually are a pretty good producer. I feel like you sleep on yourself. You go crazy. I, so I realized that I used to do too many things at once. And when I pull back just some music, because I'm trying to get out of video. So I sold my camera, to be oh, honest really? with you. Yeah. Um, I realized that one of the things I needed to do was focus on one thing at a time in order to have myself really grow. And that's why I'm trying not to get into like video too much or, you know, just like a bunch of different things. Yeah, you'd, I be know- like, um, you'd be checking me on that too a lot. Like I'll be like, oh, this, that, this, that. You're like, no, dude, just just write. <laughs> just, just just write, write your lyrics. <laughs> Which that's also helped me out a lot. So basically with me and AJ, um, we did that, right? And then would we just keep in contact for a little bit or what? Like how did it go from there? Yeah, we kind of were like off and on in contact because uh, I was working with somebody else at the time. Okay. And um, he, he was like 15, 16 years old. And I was trying to help the kid out. And then I stopped working with him because he chose to stop working with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh yeah, and I was working with Elijah. I was working with a bunch of other people that I I was potentially had a I had a bigger thing going on. And then yeah. when relation, did you give me the booth? Uh it was like 2017 right before I moved. So before he moved, he he went to where'd you move to? Arizona. Uh I you know, life will wreck you sometimes. Girls girls will will wreck you. <laughs> Amen, Your whole, brother. Your whole life will change when you figure out, oh, my God, I'm going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. And good you, Huh? I said it's a good change. Yeah, a really good change. I thought you said she's a good chick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. no, not Alyssa. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, oh. It was oh, a good change. I grew, I grew up fast, man. Like, uh, we, we, we went from... Um, being engaged to, oh my God, she graduated college. Oh my God, she got a job. Oh my God, we're going to be moving to Arizona. Oh my God, we need to get married because we're not going to be living in sin. Oh my God, yeah. we we got our own a, we got our own apartment. Oh my God, we're moving back and buying a house. Oh my God. <laughs> There's so many different things that happen <laughs> back to back. Yeah, I mean, but um, so in that timeline, that's when you were going to Arizona, right? And so you gave me the booth. He has a drummer's booth. Where'd you get the booth from? <laughs> All right. That's I found for, it. I found for, it. That's for Patreon. <laughs> that's for Patreon listeners. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he, he gave me this booth. He's like, hey, you can use this um, to record in. Yada, yada, yada. Was it, like, was oh, it was really good. It was really good. It it did its purpose. Super dope. Yeah. It, and it, I remember thinking like, Dude, AJ's so dope because I, I I knew you as a friend, but we weren't like very close, you know, and I was like, this guy's always like, well, I, like, the thing was, is I oh, believed there. in you. Wow. Thanks, bro. The, the, I believed in you. <laughs> and I I invest into what I believe in. That's that's one thing I've always. Same here. Like, like really stuck to is I, if you invest into something and you believe in that something, it'll pay off in the end, let alone it'll just make you a better person and. You know, you build relationships that way. You build friendships. And and that's how I knew, like, just from, from like, the way that all the different scenarios that you were so, like, willing to help, you always were, like, pouring into me and stuff like that. I was, like, I noticed then that me and you, we we really carry the same spirit. And we kind of, we walk that same attitude of just, like, trying to help people we believe in and stuff. And, oh, um, yes, yeah. yeah, so I was, like, yo, that, right, just from there, I can already see what God was, like, where God was moving in that direction, like, obviously he put you in my life for a reason and then um of course i had no idea how far it would go but in 2018 i'm going to chicago the legacy fest i'm meeting up with my friend cam for the first time um for the legacy festival and then he was gonna fly back with me to california and we were gonna do my album release party for honest now Honest wasn't even out yet i was doing it two months the event before i even had my album this is like minor mistakes or big Emilio used to make back when he was a youngin. And so pre AJ days, this is the kind of decisions I make. I'm, I'm having deciding to have this album release party because I really felt the Lord was telling me to drop this album release party. So I'm like, all right. But 
I didn't have a venue. I didn't have an album. I didn't have nothing. But like for me, I was bro, just doesn't, operating. Doesn't it seem so long ago that we did that? Yeah, bro. I mean, it almost is three years wow. coming up. Well, I guess it's eight months from three years, but two years ago, man. Yeah, that's true. It's crazy, dude, to think about it like that. And, but, and um, b- before you tell the story, a little bit on my history, especially with like uh, with events and stuff. Like me and my brother, we used to do these big Christian raves and put oh, yeah. put on big concerts. And we had a lot of friends that did music. Uh, we course. had a, we were <laughs> we were into the music scene pretty well, especially with like Mission and people <clears throat> Christian artists that were just coming up but they were blowing up at the same time. And um, we were working with all these artists and stuff, and we just put together this big collective event to uh, to really, um, you know, have something for the kids and the youth and the at-risk kids. And we had all these donations and donors that were willing to pour into this event. And it was very successful. We had, like, at one of the events, we had maybe 1,700 kids that showed up. And that's pretty huge for a youth event. That's crazy, yeah. Thinking about that in hindsight, that's wild. It it was it was packed. That's super dope. And what did and you it, um? It wasn't just all like males or females. It was male, like I kid you not, like eight hundred males and like nine hundred females. Like it was like a a good oh, really even. like mixed crowd. It was a mixed crowd. It was very diverse. You know, a lot of the preachers and artists that we got on they were all of like different backgrounds and cultures like my my buddy my buddy j6 that we used to do music with he he was from el salvador oh no way like grew up there like the reason why his parents came to america was to escape the wars that was going on there it's wild i man if we if we could born there yeah if we could get him on a podcast one day he's so cool to talk to um he is who taught me about music production a lot. Oh, really? Is that why you're yeah. so meticulous? He's he, man, dude's shorter than me. He's like five one. <laughs> but, hey, short Kings, where you at? Yeah. But short Kings. He, short kings. He, yes. Short, short Kings ones. button. A no, toxic but and a short Kings fire. bug button. We do. I'll think of something. I'll think of something lit and we'll record it. We'll create it. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, no, so you you have that background with that. I had no idea that you knew all that stuff about throwing an event and stuff. I remember, um, I don't remember how, did I reach out to you or was I just talking to you about my new album release party that I'm going to do in August well, 2018? How did in that? My, in how my we mind, get- we had already been kind of connected and we, we've been trying to work on music. And I'm like, bro, what do you have? Send me your stuff. You were sending me a lot of the honest stuff you're working on. I'm like, this is dope. Um uh, your quality could be way better. You yeah. Know? And that's what I was getting to you. I was like, your mixing is not bad. It's actually how the gain staging is working, how the, the initial recording is working, you know, and, and that I had will... no idea. I had no idea. Like, but like how we do things now compared to how I was doing them. I had no idea that like your, your gain staging, your recording is half the battle off the bat. So huge. It's yeah. so huge. Forget about all the plugins and the, uh, you know the Unison plugins with with uh, Universal Audio and all that. This is all just gain staging, uh, getting rid of any ambient noises. To you know, a, a good engineer. I I think it was Chris Chris Lord Algae CLA. Um, he has a lot of plugins and all that with Waves, but um, I think he was one of the ones that said you want to be mixing and not fixing. You don't want to be fixing your tracks. You want to be mixing them. And that was huge. That was <laughs> huge to me. I would have heard that, man. I literally, all I would do is fix. Like, from the jump, I'd be fixing, fixing, fixing. Like, yeah. for no reason, dude. And I would all, And I was the opposite. I was always the guy that wanted to research the little nitty-gritty stuff. Like, how can I save myself freaking an hour, you know, just on this song? Because I was mixing a lot of uh, Elijah's music, Elijah Jaron's music. And I'm like... I I, I I was lear- like both of us. It was a learning curve. Like, like uh, Elisha would come over, and he'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna put these lyrics here. This is that multi layer voices." Is like, nah, that doesn't really sound good. Let's change it like this and switch this up. Elijah is one of the people I've worked with that I kid you not is a one take Charlie. Like he will just like, Fire. seriously come in a booth and be like, 
and then like start singing and stuff and it'd be like that was it holy crap that's the song and he knows what he wants before he gets there too your boy is the complete opposite so like i mean i know what i want going into the studio but like since working with you it's been a learning curve to to do that when i go with you because like i was mixing my like i learned how to 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 mix on my own i was learning how to engineer on my own so I would just know that if I wanted to punch in or whatever I wanted, I could just do 50 takes until I get what I like. And I think that that got me in a comfortable space to just be trash instead of like trying to get myself to be better. And so when we started working together, I'm not even ashamed of it. I am not a one take Timmy Turner. That's not me. <laughs> I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to cut it, cut down Timmy my take. Turner. Right? <laughs> but working with you and not having like the all, like I'm not taking care of everything. Right? I'm just rapping. Um, it's been helping me out so much more just getting my takes done a little faster. It's a little bit better, a little bit faster. And one thing that I'm going to start doing is um, I've been recording myself before I ever record a track. I go on my own. I go, I get on the track and mm-hmm. I start rapping the lyrics until I remember them like in my head. Then I start practicing the flow like for an hour before I even touch a song because I'm trying to chase perfection now and not chase um, and not just like be stagnant. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, I get you. I mean, that's, it's a tough life. It's a tough line to ride because it's like you want to be creative and different, but at the same time, you also want to get things right. And yeah. how can you get things right if you're being different? You know what I mean? So it's like, exactly. yeah. This one worries me. I notice when I first, sometimes when I first touch a song, the verse is exactly how I want it. And then if I, if I keep a, a recording, cause I'm looking for that right, right verse, like the one you're like, that's the one. Sometimes you lose that initial spark. For me, it's the charisma. I go dry sometimes and I kind of sound either monotone or like I lose the essence of the song. So sometimes I need to take a step back and just clear my head and get back to it. Yeah. And honestly, that's the best thing to do. And I learned it from Elijah. Like the reason why I coach you in the booth, it's like, okay, we're recording. Right. And then I hear certain things and I'm like, this would sound doper this way. Well, I, I got that a lot from Elijah and he got a lot of his mixing stuff from me. So it, yeah. that's that was like our hand in hand relationship for a while so like when i i was mixing his stuff when i i'm gonna be honest with you i didn't charge him nothing not not a single dime he may have paid for a, a piece of equipment or something you know what i mean uh yeah. something of value um but the most valuable thing to us was that he had a place to record and practice and actually build up his uh his style and his, his, his confidence in, in, in recording. Well, at the same time I was doing the same exact thing with my mixing. I'm like, yeah. okay, well we're going to try something different. I don't know how he wants this done, but you know, I'm just going to throw these plugins on and see how it sounds. We try it and be like, he'd be like, that's it. That's the one that's, that's perfect. Let's, let's roll with it. And then that's it's like, at the producers too, is like when you're just starting and you're getting good and you find you're an getting- artist, yeah, like when you're getting artists, find an artist and you guys just work together. Pro- if producers, talks, producers, find an artist. That's the number one yeah, thing you could do to benefit yourself. And when you're when you're just starting, like most likely the other rapper is just starting and he's not going to be able to pay these prices. It doesn't mean that you're not worth that. But if you find your artist, just, you know, invest in that person a little bit. Well, and well let me say this. Possible. Let me say this. Invest into an artist that wants to invest into you. There you go. That's a better. Well, here's what I was going to get at because you still want to be able to, you know, make your money if it pops. So what I was saying was like, just take royalties for, for the start. Like, that's what I guess Future's producer did. He he took like, I think it was a certain percentage percentage of Future God, songs. That's got to be a trip. It, he just did it free and then Future popped off and he got paid back everything. And now Future pays him for what he's worth. But, you know, they were just both helping each other get to that next step. But right. we were talking about um, one more thing. Shout out Elijah, by the way, super dope. Elijah Duran. If you don't, if you, if you guys, for some reason, you don't know who Elijah Duran is. Uh, he's been on in a mixture with a lot of Miles Minnick stuff. He's been in the mix with uh, a Mission. lot of people's stuff. Mission. Um, he's been in the mix with Terrence Richmond. I know Terrence isn't as big, but Terrence is a crazy oh, dope man. artist. Terrence Richmond. You should look him up. He's amazing. Yeah, but uh, Elijah Duran, go follow him at Elijah Duran. He's an amazing artist right there. And he's handsome, y'all. So, ladies, if you're single and out there, I don't know if he has a girlfriend right now. Does He, he does, huh? He does. Never mind, ladies. Get thee behind me, Satan. Super <laughs> handsome. Stupid. Oh. So this is, this is for Elijah's Instagram. Elijah, you're so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, this is okay. definitely going to be a clip that gets sent to him. 100%. 100%. Um, so we were talking about it. He's actually in the story that we're talking about. So Anthony, we were talking back and forth, right? And then um, somehow, some way, it got brought up about my album release party, and you offered to do it for me. I didn't know this was something that you knew how to do or could do. For me, it was like a far-fetched dream. I was just putting my faith in God that this event was going to happen. I even documented it. I never posted it, but I documented it because I was so certain that it was going to be like good. And um, so you were like, yeah, dude, you know, I know how to do all this kind of stuff. And you set it up for us to have, um, you set up the whole event. I mean, I got the, I got the church that I go to. They let me use the, the event, but he set up like the sound. Um, he set up. The yeah, whole me and me and Tyler got there. We're like, all right, let's gut this place. We just started unplugging stuff and repatching things. And yeah, I, I hate I hate doing that at churches. But what I did is I took a list of everything and how it was set up, just so if I had to rehook it all back up the way they wanted it, it was it was gonna happen either way. But we went in there and just started unplugging stuff, reprogramming the lights and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Shout out Pastor Chris because that was a Saturday night and he let us throw that and was there. We all had church in the morning. Yeah. So it was super dope. Um, you got a set list. Now, this set list is pretty cool in hindsight because those people um, in Modesto that day had no idea what kind of treat they were getting as far as Christian hip hop goes because yeah, uh, my friend Cam was flying back with me. He um, Around that time, he was getting signed to this label called Culture Villains, which they're doing really good now and they're all making great music. Um, shout out culture villains and then also you brought along um your your friend elijah it's elijah jaron right that's how you say it or jaron jaron i always get wrong dude and now it's just i'm in my head elijah jaron jaron <laughs> right jaron jaron it's not sharon it's sharon i gotcha elijah jaron so you brought the homie <laughs> over a dope experienced seasoned artist right so when he when he gives you a show he gives you a show so he was there killing it and then you also had um, uh, Miles Minnick, right? So you brought Miles Minnick through, and this is before. This is like a like I'd say like six, seven months before he like kind of started taking his upward um, ascent to the to, in the music industry before he started like doing all those crazy songs, Pluto um, with One K Few. Then you got Holy Show Out. So this is all before that. It's like 2018. Miles does that, that tour in like 2019. So before Miles popped. So you got Miles Minnick, Elijah Duran, um, you got you got Cam, and you got me, and we're all doing this show, and they're all seasoned artists. Like for for them to be opening up for me is insane. Like I, years later, I'm opening up for Miles. You know what I'm saying? Right, so like right. that's how crazy it is that he was he was opening up for me, and that's how we met. And so after that happened, um, it actually led to a very good relationship with my friend Miles Minnick, which I'll get into later because I want to finish this story. I don't want to um go off it too much. So. Yeah, so then I met you there, 2018, that happened. And then I guess it's part of the story. 2019, I'm starting to like do shows with Miles. Well, I started actually just by hanging out with Miles. He invited me on tour and I would like fold t-shirts for him and stuff and just, you know, be present um, and just kind of examine what he's doing because it was somebody who was doing something successful that I want to do. So I, I kind of just like enjoyed being around him. He was a good friend. And then um, during that time, I got a show in Elk Grove and anthony you text me and you're like oh i'm gonna come through i was like all right bet and um at that time you were doing e3 media and um yeah. he came up <laughs> he, and he was like I, I said what's up i hadn't seen him in a long time so it was real refreshing you had just told me that you moved back to elk grove was that around that time that you moved back or what did you already where you had you already been back i had just moved back literally and here you go oh that's my i want that's my honest album release party there's a yeah. whole testimony that goes into this picture um, that I'll get into sometime. But yeah, this is a uh, this is this is at my honest release party. It's my mom. <laughs> that was actually my dad's first time seeing me rap at all. And um, shout out to Johnny. I know Johnny this is a, a story for another time, but your dad just got out too, didn't he? Yeah, he. That's what I was about to say next. He had just gotten out of prison, and um, I think he had a. I think he had to be out of there by like a certain time, like nine, because he had to go back to the halfway house in Fresno. Yeah. But yeah, so he got to see me perform like two or three songs, but um, it was really cool because he had no idea that I rapped because he had just got out, just got back to Modesto, and then he, you know, shows up to see me come out and rapping. Um, I think I don't think I ever released a song that I ended up that I, that I came out rapping to, but yeah, so we got to see what I do. Um, my mom and dad had each other in year. Uh, they seen each other then, and it was just a real emotional moment. Um, but yeah, so that whole thing happened. It was 
It was really awesome. Like I messed up a lot of my lyrics because I had just written most of that music. But I will say that I did enjoy um, – I enjoyed it because I was around people that I loved and it was just a fun, fun day. And it was my first time headlining a show, even though that kind of counts. It kind of doesn't. I don't know. But I, that was my first time, you know, hosting a sh- or headlining a show. So then we leave in um, 2019. Um, I start hanging out with Miles. And then you went to one of my shows and you told me um, when you were there, you're like, hey, I'm doing this E3 media. Do you want to do an interview? And you recorded me performing as well, right? My, mind you, I've been. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. And it's probably the first time I would ever admit this to you. I've been slowly preparing you. You've been, uh, oh my God, you were, what's the word? What's the word? Grooming me. Yeah, I was slowly (laughs) grooming you to be able to accept management. I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. let's see. Let's see if he's willing to put the work in. Hey, let's shoot a video. Hey, let's get your concert going. Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's collaborate with other artists. Let's. You know, and I was slowly, and then it, that talk came that one day where it's like, are we going to make this serious and I'm going to be managing yep. you or are you going to stay back and be doing the same thing you're doing right now a year later? Yeah. And for me, like I always, like normal Emilio would be very hesitant anytime, like um, anytime like, someone would be like, hey, do you want to manage? Because uh, I've had a few offers in the past, but like you were the first legitimate one, but like the minute I hear management, I, I like you know it's a scary word to a to an artist who doesn't, who's trying to be independent and doesn't really understand you know like how it could be beneficial and stuff. But like as I'm questioning like hmm what should I say, like God immediately like slapped me in the face and was like, I made you pick him. I made you walk over to him and and say that weird thing that I'm talking to you and that you guys need to make music together. So you need to quit. <laughs> you need to roll with AJ. And I was like, all right, bet. And I, I just, I couldn't say no. Like, there was no possible way. Like, and I, it, there, and it, everything was lining up so perfect. It was a two way street, too, because it was like, do I really want to manage somebody right now? Do I really want to uh, start going down that road again? Because I was doing yeah. it in the past. But the number one thing was, like, it's like, okay, God, you've shown me so many things. Okay. You show me the, the work ethic. You show me the faith. You show me the, you know, the, the belief system, the, the connection we both have you've you know and i i'm slowly instead of me just jumping in and be like bro i'm gonna manage your music i was like taking myself very slow even from when i left to arizona and i came back i've always known you have a good heart and you know like this was gonna be something that was gonna eventually happen but it had to happen the right way exactly and that's also like another thing that i like about our story is that like anytime like i I believe levante told me this he's like if if you're forced to make a decision um quick it's because that's not of god and so basically like in other words the enemy tries to get you to make a a rash decision and move quick like yes i need a manager yes i need to sign to somebody but when you when you let god develop the situation and you pray and wait till you get an answer from god that's when things move smoothly and so much better oh so much better bro um okay yeah so little technical difficulties but we got it back on um we're currently first one of our podcast yeah, we're round currently... of applause. Everyone. Hit it with me. Round of applause. It took it took Emilio to figure out our audio issue. How about that? <laughs> yes, I finally did something, guys. Let's go. I was sick all day. I couldn't uh, do many notes, but I was ready when it mattered. Yeah, but you were talking about how Levante told talked to you about jumping into something uh, so quickly, and I was getting ready to say that I once read a book about relationships, and it, it was mainly about um, you know. Uh, the opposite sex relationships, like, you know, like male to female and getting into the whole dating uh, realm as a teenager and all that uh, is when I read it. But I took it, I took a lot of that advice just for regular relationships, like friendships and stuff. And one of the biggest pieces out of that book, and I cannot think of the name of the book and I will have to like uh, go in the description. Yeah. I'll have to go find it somewhere, but Um, In that book, he says, the right thing at the wrong time can become the wrong thing. And that has always stuck with me because it's like, man, that's powerful. Just because it's the right thing doesn't mean it's meant to happen right at this time. And so that's why that's why like with uh, with you, it, it took such a long time to actually get to that management role. And not only that, but to to 
I, I like to first build a relationship with you, you know, and, and understand where learn so important, dude, is like, even with rappers, people that I work with, um, anybody, I just realized that like, it doesn't, if I hate when people walk into things and they're like, what can you do for me automatically, like, automatically. So like when I meet new people, I try to just like, Hey, what's up, dude? My name is Emilio. And then like, you know, just become their friend. And then if they need something, you know, add some value to their life before, you know, I mean, it's good. Business. It's good to network and all that, but nothing's more important than building relationships. Like, uh, they they have a saying well, in business. Like are you really, are you really networking if you're if you're over here, you know, just using a person day one? I don't mean like just a, cl- a mutual agreement. I mean like going and asking, or is that person really going to get a good first impression of who you are, rather than just you being a friend and getting to know them? Yeah, they have a saying in business too. Uh, they teach you this in business school and all that. Is it better to to sign up five new clients or to retain one important client or like oh, wow. uh, a client that's been around for a while. And the most obvious answer is going to be the client that's been around for a while because you have a relationship with that person. They, they trust the company. They understand things. You can sign up five new clients and it's going to completely, they're all going to drop you the next day. Cause they don't yeah. understand the, the work ethic, the faith and the, the, the abilities you put into, to what you do. Yeah, that's facts. But yeah, that's what, that's what I love about this whole um, thing and sole purpose even is just that we, uh, God took its time with it. You know, it was, it was a slow moving process, but all the things were getting aligned. Cause if you think about the kind of person that you were in 2016, the, the kind of person, the, the kind of a person, the kind of person that I was, the kind of person that you were. And then um, you look into the future now, 2020. Um, or when we first met again, 2020, you know, the kind of person you were then and the kind of person I was then it was like, literally I was ready to go. That's where I was at. I was in a place where I was, um, just ready for, to attack whatever God it has for me. And right. during COVID, like if I didn't have you during COVID, I don't know what I would have been doing that whole time. <laughs> and then for you, you know, you got married. Emilio has kids. <laughs> Emilio has kids. Dude. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, yeah, so I, I just think that God put us in the right place, right time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we met each other early on, but like through the Holy Spirit and wisdom, you know, kind of just let it play out. And sure enough, God showed up. Yep. Oh, yeah. And dude, 2020 was such a weird year for everybody. But me and you actually had a pretty damn, like, dang good year that we, we like, we, did. we stuck to everything we were currently doing. We held off on releasing stuff, but we stuck to everything we were currently doing. And that was super yeah, like, important. People were like people were telling me because I remember um, coming off 2019, meeting a lot of people, getting connected. People thought I was going to go into 2020, just dropping, dropping, dropping. I dropped the one song that I had from and 2018. And we kind of were um, planned out for that. We were, yeah. COVID did set us back, but at the same time, like once we got settled in with COVID and everything, and you were you were more available, and I was like not as scared, afraid to go outside. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's get to it, and we started on this project and. Man, I mean, it was just awesome. We were in the studio all the time, almost every week, just meeting up, recording, um, talking, you know, building our relationship. I think that that time was feeling was really just important, not only that, so that we had something that was like from both of us, but so that we had, and Villain is my project. Um, if you haven't heard it, go check it out. Spotify, all platforms, Emilio Sarabia. But um, Villain was that was that project that really helped us build like our our, our work ethic. It helped us build our relationship more. Um, and also helped us see like where we belong in each part of, you know, what we're doing in the future. You know, what's funny like about that is that what's you up? stood, you stood over at my house more in 2020 than you did in 2019. And in 2020 was the lockdown year, <laughs> you know, it's like, I know, right? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. yeah, that's like, a fun. but for sure, dude, it was definitely a great, great. Um, I feel like I, I don't, I don't feel like I wasted 2020 one bit. No, not at all. Not at all. So, yeah, I mean, you got some new music dropping. Let's go ahead and talk about the single that's dropping this this Friday. I know a lot of you are wondering, AJ noticed right when I got on this podcast that I'm wearing this Armani shirt. I'm pretty sure that's the brand. We're not sure, but. (laughs) I've been making fun of him the whole time. Whole time. And I'm like, listen, AJ, it's a, it's a, it's a big moment over here. Wait, AJ, listen, man, just, I'm trying to pull up console. Listen, man, listen, it's not coming up. I was trying to get reverb on my voice. But yeah, I was just trying to tell AJ, like, listen, man, I, I picked out this shirt on purpose for a reason. See, one thing you notice about this shirt is what? Right away. It's yellow. It's yellow. 
And because it's yellow, well, let me tell you why it's yellow. Because I'm dropping a single, Lemons, on January 29th, 2021. The first release of the new year. It's something that should have been on um, Villain, but we kind of held it back for a little bit. It's funny. It was like number seven on Villain or something like that. Yeah, it was track number seven. And um, yeah, it was going to be on that just to be a fun track. And we ended up pulling it back. But me and AJ were talking about it and we're like, there's no way that we cannot have this um, not come out. So January 29th, this Friday, it's coming out. It's going to be crazy. Um, the whole thing about the the whole thing about the song is that when life gives you lemons, better squeeze. It means go make some lemonade. Go do what you got to do while uh, when you've been given it. So like basically 2020, you know, we were given coronavirus. So how did me and AJ respond? We made projects after projects after projects. And we were ready technically for two albums. But, you know, we had decided- lemons. Uh, but I had lemons. <laughs> that sounds so creepy when you say it. Oh, say it one more time. Uh, I turned it off. Hold on. <laughs> it's like, you know. I had lemons. <laughs> That's beautiful. So when God gave me lemons, I definitely um, wanted to squeeze and get all that lemonade. So we made a bunch of songs. We made a, we, um, you know, I read my Bible more than I ever have ever in my life in 2020. And just taking advantage of what you have and not worrying about what you don't, not worrying about what your neighbors are doing, just worrying right. about what you got going, what God's got going on in your life, glorifying God with it. And that's Lemonade, baby. So my song Lemons is dropping January 29th, 2021. That's this Friday, y'all. Let's get it. Yep. Heck yeah, man. And not only that, but we have a lot of singles that we're just ready to drop. Stuff that didn't make projects. Stuff that was meant for other projects. Stuff that was meant for other projects. Stuff that is just freaking amazing that has come across our lap at the beginning of this year or at the end of last year. There's there's oh, yeah. been a lot of good, 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 good stuff that we'll, we we we'll, like, sometimes I go back and I look and I'm like oh we got all this yeah. like, oh my god I'll be depressed like man I haven't written in a minute man and, my career's looking bad. and when the quality the, of the, everything the, is getting better people don't even realize half half of villain was recorded in Logic and the other half was recorded in freaking Luna oh that's right I forgot and about that that made yeah that's things- true difficult but it kind of showed a transition out like five that was a complete logic project was it really wow and i really like the mix yeah i think it just shows like for us at least it shows us that like in my head i look at it as like the transition period villain is like the transition to a new season so like we kind of we were in these dolls even my studio i seen your studio and how you set it up god bless me with the amount of money to be able to go and change my studio as well so now we're both rocking um Apollo Twin X uh, Universal yeah. Audio. What kind do you have, AJ? I have a Twin X Quad. So it's a Apollo. T- yeah, it's a quad quad core. He's always got a one up me. One. It's I wish two, I would have got the rack. That's a two up. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, now watch this. My speakers. I got the HS fives, and you got the HS eights. That's a three up, bro. That's not HS8s. cool. We were just talking about my song, and he's always over here making it about himself, and I hate it. <laughs> no but yeah so we kind of it's a transition period you know where we now hey i went up to you on the microphone because i had this one first and then you got your mic yeah you actually showed me that this is a great microphone it's a i love the sound of the ua uh not the ua the u87 the neumann and i've always wanted one of those mics i had no idea that this was an exact exact replica of it and that was from you just like coincidentally getting a really good mic <laughs> Sir, no. Well, I actually I looked up this because the first mic I ever you got saw it was in a music uh, video. It was a hundred dollar M audio mic. Then I finally upgraded to a Blue Spark, and then I was like, man, I'm ready for like my mic now. Now I'm ready to make quality music. So I look into mics, couldn't find nothing like on the internet that I was like into. And then I go on Twitter and um, shout out Adrian Stresso. I think that's how you say your name. Um, he's a dope artist, and I was following him at the time. And he said, dude. Uh, this mic is so amazing and he just tweeted it and he said the the warm wa u87 i was like what okay i'm gonna look into it so i looked into it i listened to how it sounded and i was like that's fire so that's why i got the mic oh yeah so it's it's a good the mic real shout too. out is stress so yeah but yeah <laughs> this guy with the freaking but, reverb you're gonna have too much fun with that I, I know i'm sorry man i can't help it i'm gonna definitely like write down scenarios that i want to use this reverb because <laughs> i'm obsessed with it 
Yeah. I got to figure out the right ratio though. But yeah, dude. So we got, we, that's our transition period. We got everything done. Um, we got new mics. We got new, um, I even got a camera. Um, what's that? What's mine? The Sony, uh, a seven, three. And so we got, um, we got some lens for that as well. Just upgrading, you know, upgrade the camera, upgrade the speakers, upgrade, um, the interface, upgrade the microphone, upgrade the headphones, even my whole old studio or no, it was just my speakers. My speakers cost the, the amount of these. And luckily I had some extra money to get my HS fives, but yeah. So we upgraded and By we got way, a launch. Those, pack are, any- those are some focal headphones right there. Focal yeah. headphones. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but Those yours are, are the real beauty. Do you have your? No, you don't have them on right now. But uh, no, I don't. But uh, I don't know if you can see you it. Got. You can see them kind of right there in the box. Those are the move. Just move like this, and they'll see it. Other way. Sorry for the people listening. But yeah, he has. What, what brand is it? Neumann. So pretty, dude. Alyssa, shout out to you. Those are my mixing and mastering headphones. So I decided that I'm going to use this for the podcast because those ones are my babies right there. I got to be careful with those. <laughs> so what are you going to? What are we planning on doing on this podcast that you're going to ruin headphones? You think just not using them as much is going to save them? Yes, and yeah, the- theoretically it would. But I figure we could make some babies on the podcast. Baby making podcast. It's your baby making. <laughs> yeah, but, oh my goodness. Anyways, yeah, so life has given me lemons, and I'm going to squeeze. <laughs> I was just trying to think of something I could do for the reverb, to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, I'd say that's a pretty good place to end it. I mean, we got a, yeah. we got a single drop in this Friday. We're pretty excited about it. Uh, guys, it. go pre, pre-save pre that um, to your Spotify, your Apple Music, whatever it's on, and uh whatever you whatever platforms you guys have and we want to be able to release stuff to you guys and you guys be able to hear it yes sir so go and get that january 29th when life gives you lemons you better squeeze go ahead and plug uh plug yourself amelia so my name's emilio sarabia you can catch me on all streaming platforms for music um the way you spell my last name is s arabia if you ever forget um instagram emilio sarabia with two a's Twitter, Emilio Sarabia with two A's. All social media platforms, Emilio Sarabia with two A's. I'm a Christian rapper who loves God and seeks to glorify God. Don't really care about the rest of the stuff. I just want to make music that glorifies God. So, love y'all. And I'm AJ Solified on Instagram. Uh, AJ Morales. If you guys want to find me, it's AJ at AJ Solified. And we out. Woo!